Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of Galileo Exploration, a fast progression series where we will be exploring a new planetary body every episode and today we are going to IOTA. And as you might have guessed we need a rocket to go to IOTA and uh, we want to send two Kerbals with us today because we want to have a pilot and, um, and a scientist with us. And obviously another, another person, if we can call him that way, um, that will send with us is Marvin. Because um, as you can see Marvin um, not only received a facelift, but he's also, he's still depressed. So maybe a trip to Iota will cheer him up slightly. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'm also using those uh, small inline reaction wheels as uh, spacers here because uh, we don't have that many parts unlocked so it's kind of difficult to figure out the right configuration and as we learned from last episode having heat shield too close to your capsule can be a little bit dangerous for Kerbals. So once we have that we'll add a surface bay and some antennas plus uh, a lot of science experiments for our Kerbals to you know to do science on IOTA's surface, some batteries as well um, and a Kerbal engineer unit for you so, so we can actually have some useful readouts while uh, in flight about uh, where we are, how much delta view do we have and so on. Uh, we'll also add um, two of those um, new experiments introduced by um, the Magic Orbital Science mod. And obviously um, later on we'll add a surface ablation module because lasers are cool and uh, if we can get them on our spacecraft we should totally do it. Uh, we'll also add the Science Junior because this experiment is worth quite a lot. So yes, to get to IOTA we need to have a little bit under 2000 meters per second delta V and I'll tell you in a moment how I know this. And, um, but for now let's focus on building our um, lander here. I don't want this lander to be fully reusable but we definitely want to recover as much as we can, especially in science experiments because those are very expensive. Fuel tanks not so much so we can kind of ditch them, there will be much damage there. And um, we need to have a little bit over 2000 meters per second while we are in orbit around Gale because you know well, for any correction maneuvers orbit inclination changes and so on because IOTA is also um, in a slightly inclined orbit or maybe IOTA is not an inclined orbit but we'll launch in an inclined orbit because of the uh, location the KSC is in uh, Gale so you know so so we have a little bit of margin left we'll um, have a little bit more uh, delta V in that lander but the orbital booster I would like to recover it almost entirely well, maybe not entirely, because we'll add some solid fuel boosters that I will not recover. And this is again a conscious decision that I've made and um, probably very detrimental to my image as, as an SSTO expert slash maniac. But uh, well, nevertheless, we'll do it. And uh, here we are with our rocket. Now it's time to choose the crew. And as you can see, both Jebediah and Bob are called Galian. But as you can see, tourists are still Kerman and they wonder what that might mean. Whatever that means, we are ready to launch. And here we are on the launch pad with Marvin on top of the rocket, looking uh, rather imposing. Unfortunately, I think that he is <laughs> he's still depressed. But let's hope that uh, this trip will cheer him up slightly, because otherwise I don't know what, what else can we do. If we have an idea what we can do to cheer Marvin up, let me know in the comments, please. As you can see our rocket is looking rather ridiculous and um, definitely is an overkill for, uh, for an IOTA mission but um, you know, that's my style, what can I say. Uh, before launch we'll just quickly grab this laser surface uh, scan because you know lasers are cool and we should totally have them on our spacecraft and use them once we have them. And uh, yeah, here we are launching and um, it's all looking good so far, I mean we have a good uh, thrust to weight ratio, we're climbing up fast, grabbing all that science that we can while flying. In a moment uh, we will detach our uh, solid rocket boosters that we will not recover, as you remember, not at all. And uh, there we go, they should be gone now and as you can see they are detached in a very nice hexagon. Unfortunately Marvin is still depressed. What can I do to cheer you up Marvin? Well, right now I think he's even more depressed with, uh, <laughs> with all the burning that he's receiving. And uh, yes, as you can see we are finishing the first part of our ascent here, uh, the first part of our burn is also over. So we will just circularize once we get to our apoapsis. And um, our circularization burn is rather large, over 1400 meters per second of delta V that we'll need to spend. And we have almost exactly that left in our uh, first, well sort of first stage. But uh, we won't use all of that to circularize because first of all we want to recover our booster and um, the booster, the first uh, stage of our rocket, does not have any probe cores on it so it's not controllable. So we're uh, circularized to the point where uh, our periapsis will reach around 65 kilometers altitude. 
And this is only done because we want to have a really long aero break. So long actually that um, we will land very close to KSC. And um, I hope that uh, we'll have enough luck to do it. And uh, I must say that, you know, spoiler, that we actually did. Uh, I won't show you right now all the footage because it was rather long. Multiple aero breaks, you know, multiple orbits actually to get to that point. But if you're interested, I'll leave it in the, at the end of the video for you to watch. So here we are with our spacecraft in orbit, with Marvin unfortunately still depressed, but uh, you know, let's not worry about that for the moment. So, I told you that uh, to get to IOTA we need to have a little bit less than 2000 meters per second of delta V while we are in orbit. And uh, I calculated that uh, value based on orbital parameters of IOTA. So, for the transfer we need to have a little bit over 900 meters per second, assuming that we start in a uh, zero inclination 100 kilometer parking orbit around Gale, then we need to have around uh, a little bit over 200 meters per second for the insertion band. For landing and takeoff we need to have a little bit over 580 meters per second and then another 200 meters for transfer back to Gale. This was calculated based on uh, orbital parameters and uh, using orbital mechanics equations. And uh, yes, I am aware that uh, Galileo's planets pack come with a dedicated Delta V map, but isn't it better if you can just calculate stuff yourself? You don't need to answer that question, by the way. So, after grabbing some extra science from orbit around Gale using uh, old experiments we had on board that we haven't used before, we were ready to execute our insertion burn. And uh, <laughs> since I haven't unlocked uh, solar panels yet, uh, we had only the electric charge that was stored in the batteries and we had no way of replenishing it because the rear engine has no alternator. So to save electricity, I decided that we will spin stabilize our spacecraft during this massive burn. That's the largest burn that we'll need to perform during this entire trip. And I'm sure that um, Jeb and Bob did appreciate the little roller coaster that we uh, that we've offered them. Uh, Marvin not so much. He he didn't enjoy it. No, Marvin not so much. Yes, but as you can see, uh, it worked pretty well. Actually, our vessel is rather symmetrical. So uh, yes, the spin stabilization worked really well, and uh, we are able to execute um, the, almost the en entirety of the burn without any major issues. Um, I just stabilized the vessel using SAS at the very end for fine tuning of our final orbit. And as you can see, we launched in uh, probably the worst possible uh, configuration to go to IOTA. But since IOTA is a very similar orbit as Moon is in uh, the stock game, the way you launch to it is almost at the same way. So if you uh, look at the planetary system from the top down view and you imagine the system as a clock, you launch a uh, quarter past IOTA, I would say. Yes, that, that should be it. So basically you launch uh, in such a way that IOTA should be quarter of its orbit in front of your arrival point. And um, now we need to perform a uh, rather large inclination change. And uh, yes, we could have done more efficiently if we waited enough, but I didn't want to wait. And we had plenty of Delta V just for this occasion. So the inclination change burn was uh, relatively large, around 200 meters per second. And uh, once it was done, we are off to encounter IOTA. Yeah, and uh, as it's usually the case in uh, such missions, we send our um, you know mission scientist Bob on multiple uh, spacewalks to collect all that science and reset uh, all the experiments that we could reset so we could maximize the science gain from this mission. Again, spoiler alert, so we uh, ended up earning uh, a little bit over 1100 science points from that entire mission, so we obviously needed to grab science from high orbit around Gale, high orbit around Iota, low orbit around Iota, and uh, every biome-sensitive experiment that we could get from orbit, we got it. And also, yeah, but let's not go ahead of ourselves, you will see what happened later. But uh, all I wanted to say is just, uh, since it's pretty boring actually, I will uh, skip through most of that and we'll go into the, uh, the more, more interesting stuff. And uh, yes, as you can see, Gale is now fading in the distance, looking rather beautiful and uh, wonderful Galileo's planet's back. I actually had a quite interesting bag uh, with a lot of um, stripes appearing on the screen and I wonder if that's something that was uh, put there intentionally as a grain effect to add a little bit of a cinematic value or um, it was just a bag really, I don't know. Uh, and uh, yes, here we are arriving at IOTA. So as I said, once we arrived uh, to IOTA we needed to execute an insertion burn. And look at this burn, it's almost 200 meters per second at slightly lower orbits, so it's pretty much what we've estimated. So science for the win! Jesus, I'm such a nerd. And uh, yes, once we were in orbit around IOTA, it was time to get even more science. But we won't go into details about that because it's pretty boring. 
Once it was done, it was time to find the right spot for landing. And in one of my genius moments, <laughs> I blindly chose one of the spots that was exactly on the other side of IOTA. So we had no connection to KSC and because of that Marvin could not be detached from the spacecraft because he had no connection to KSC as well. <laughs> and without the uh, constant connection to his motivational speaker, he's too depressed to do anything on his own. Yes, yeah, so Marvin could not enjoy, uh, probably he wouldn't enjoy anyway, but he couldn't enjoy uh, walking on IOTA's surface. Landing was easy because we, as I said, we had um, lots of delta V in uh, in excess, even after executing that unplanned uh, inclination change. And IOTA in terms of gravity is just over minimus, but very little. So once you are landing on IOTA and actually landed on IOTA, you will feel like you were on minimus. Uh, actually, quite interestingly looking minimus, except that uh, IOTA is white and uh, anything but flat. So landing there is rather challenging, I would say. But uh, nevertheless, we've landed no problem. But since we landed on the ledge, I decided that uh, instead of keeping our uh, spacecraft in a uh, completely vertical position, uh, we can use the uh, power of reaction wheels and um, actually lay it on the side so we don't have to worry about running out of electricity. And uh, yes, since I've installed too many reaction wheels on that spacecraft, uh, it's kind of overpowered in a sense. And uh, we had to actually tweak them down slightly to maintain some sane level of control. But um, yes, it means that we can also uh, write our spacecraft up once we are done. And uh, you know, once um, that was done and over, um, a standard uh, surface business was conducted. And uh, obviously Jab and Bob were uh, thrilled uh, about being on IOTA. Marvin, not so much. No, no, he, he didn't enjoy it at all uh, maybe that's uh, that was because uh, he lost uh, connection to his motivational speaker i uh, i suppose that was the case because otherwise he would probably uh, be completely cured of his depression yes uh, and then uh, you know uh, a memorial flag was placed to commemorate this uh, great achievement for a uh, kerbal kind that they have landed on a completely alien moon that they observed uh, so long for telescopes on the gale and this time they could set foot on it. The amazing achievement for Kerbal Kind and uh, for us as well. And once it was done, uh, we could go back into orbit. And as you may have noticed, the orbital velocity of IOTA is uh, just over 240 meters per second. And uh, we need to perform a burn that is around uh, the same uh, that the insertion burn to IOTA, which is 200 meters per second to go back to gale. And uh, we have more than enough Delta V to do it, so we're good to go. And um, the Terrier engine is an absolute overkill for IOTA. So uh, yes, we don't have to worry about inefficient burns, so I think we're safe. But I also suppose that the, the more perceptive of you have noticed that we might have a burning problem once we go to Gale. And that burning problem obviously is that Marvin is on the wrong side of the heat shield, so he can... He will have a relatively hot re-entry, um, let's call it that way, but right now it's a little bit too late to change that, so uh, fingers crossed for Marvin. So as you can see Marvin unfortunately ended up being on the very wrong side of the heat shield and uh, we are pointing prograde so um, the explosion started almost immediately and uh, yes uh, Marvin lost a couple of um, things, um, uh, a couple of limbs and his eyes and his battery eyes as well and also his um, wheel legs. So he was a little damaged so to speak after the first aero break but luckily his head survived so you know well we can repair him and uh, you know he'll get to keep all his memories so I would say I would call that a success. Especially if you consider the fact that um, we we're um, aero braking at a relatively high altitude so we had to do a couple of aero breaks to actually get our periapsis to be in the atmosphere and um, I am very disappointed to say that uh, the first aero break was the only aero break where uh, there were explosions so all of the others were um, actually pretty boring because they were going all according to the plan um, the only thing that happened that was it was kind of exciting was that uh, we ran out of electricity and uh, we had no means of controlling the vessel at all but it was drug stabilized so yes so that's was a success. I should say that probably in a more excited voice. So yes, so the entire mission was a success. We landed on Gale safely with all the experiments. We brought a lot of science with us and um, we also made the landing exactly on the other side of the planet as KC. So um, the recovery didn't get us much, but we get paid for uh, achieving all those amazing milestones and doing contract to explore IOTA 
and we went from 65,000 credits right when we deployed our rocket to 800,000 credits and now we are ready to go to our next destination. In the next video we are going to SETI and uh, I hope that uh, next time our mission will be even more successful than the one that you just saw and Marvin will go back to Gale in one piece and without missing any limbs. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed, if you did please consider liking this video, if you're new to this channel please consider subscribing. My name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.